In this video, we're going to look at another application of water turbines, and once again, we're going to be looking at reaction turbines. In this scenario, we have a header tank on the left-hand side, and the water is going to drain from the header tank through the turbine and into a lower tank on the right-hand side. Now, once again, it's important to understand why this is a reaction turbine as opposed to an impulse turbine. And the reason being is because the only way that energy can be recovered from the fluid is because there's a pressure drop across the turbine. We know from previous work on Bernoulli's equation that a fluid can have both pressure energy and kinetic energy. But in this scenario here, we know that the volume flow rate going into the turbine, let's call it Q1, must equal the volume flow rate coming out of the turbine. Well, if that's true, the velocity of the fluid going into the turbine also equals the velocity of the fluid coming out of the turbine. So there's no change in kinetic energy of the fluid. Instead, what we do have is a change in pressure, and we'll call this delta P. The big difference with an impulse turbine is an impulse turbine reduces the kinetic energy of the fluid rather than the pressure energy. And we do actually see machines which do a combination of the two where they have both reaction and impulse stages. So the formula that we need to use for this scenario is the power equals the efficiency, and we'll talk a bit more about the efficiency in a moment, multiplied by the volume flow rate of the fluid times the change in pressure. Now the formula that we see here is actually derived from the power output equation that we saw in the previous video. If we were to substitute in terms for volume, flow rate and change in pressure, we would arrive back at the power output equation. What that means then is that our efficiency is equivalent to the coefficient of power in the turbine power output equation that we saw previously. Now the assumption that, that makes if we refer to our turbine and we have an exploded view of our turbine, we have fluid going in and we have fluid going out. The assumption is that the impeller has a swept area equal to the bore of the pipe, like so. So the impeller or the propeller of the turbine has a swept area equal to the bore of the pipe. So that said, we can calculate the power output of this turbine based on various parameters. Now in the bottom left hand corner, I've specified an efficiency of this turbine as 45%. We already know that it can't exceed 59.3% because of Bet's limit. I've also specified a fluid density of 1020 for salt water. We have a mass flow rate through the turbine of 12 kilograms per second. And we have a change in height between the upper tank and the lower tank of 85 meters. Now for this example, we're going to be neglecting pressure losses. Now, what we can already see then is that if we have a greater pressure on the left-hand side of the turbine than on the right-hand side, then we must be dropping pressure through that turbine. And the way that we calculate that pressure drop is using a formula that we've seen previously. Previously, we said that pressure was rho g h. Therefore, change in pressure is density times gravity times change in height. Note that density and gravity remain unchanged. Therefore, in this scenario, our change in pressure is going to be the density of the fluid, 1020, times gravity, 9.81, times our change in height of 85 meters, giving us a change in pressure equal to 850,527 Pascals. I'm going to leave that in SI units because we're going to be reusing that value in a moment. We already have our efficiency as 45%, so as a decimal that's 0 0.45, and we also have our mass flow rate. But note that it isn't the mass flow rate that we want, it's the volume flow rate. And volume flow rate Q is just mass flow rate divided by density. So let's go ahead and calculate our power. We have the power equals the efficiency as a decimal, 0 0.45, times the volume flow rate, 
Well, we have a mass flow rate of 12 and we have a density of 1020. And we're timesing that by our pressure drop. Note that we're working in SI units, so our answer is going to be in SI units. Now when we run that through the calculator, we get a power output equal to 4502 watts. So now let's look at a slightly different way that this formula can be used. And let's assume that the efficiency of our turbine can be improved by routine maintenance. So over on the left hand side we have our efficiency of 45%. But let's say that after routine maintenance that efficiency is going to increase, so it's no longer going to be 45%. And let's say that after this maintenance we notice that the power output, P, increases to 5200 watts as an example. So what we can now do is rearrange that equation and determine our new efficiency. Because efficiency is just power divided by Q delta P. And we've just said that our new power is 5200 watts. And we said previously that the volume flow rate was the mass flow rate of 12 divided by the density of 1020. Now assuming that our pressure drop remains the same, 850527, then we're going to have a new efficiency for our turbine. And that new efficiency comes out to be 51.97%. Or we can just round that to 52%. So we can use this formula in a number of ways. We can use it to determine power output when our efficiency, volume flow rate and pressure drop are known. Or we can use it to determine efficiency when the power output, volume flow rate and pressure drop are known. Noting that the absolute maximum value for our efficiency would be 59.3% due to Bet's limit as established by Betts' law.